Can you do that? Yes, I'm back. I would like to know why I'm not out. Okay, I'm back, folks. Very strange stuff with the, the Wi-Fi suddenly going out. <laughs> yeah, it's like nothing like what it's supposed to look like. Libby's trying to get her phone to stream and... It's not going to happen. Nothing looks proper. So. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just being paranoid, but that was strange. And of course, it was right in the middle of that young fellow's speech and messed me up. It's really a drag. What the hell? Well, let's choose something. <laughs> I'm not going to play with mine because I, mine, you know, this is a new phone, so I don't know what Well, I didn't think of cool off. Uh, I didn't, it's not really that hot here, but I admit I'm in the shade now. But uh, I think it had more to do with the available Wi-Fi, which suddenly disappeared, even though it was the one that uh, I'm signed into automatically. So uh, I don't clearly understand what's going on. Okay, I'm streaming on somebody else's stream. <laughs> I don't know, are you streaming at all? No, I think I'm watching somebody else's stream. Ah, uh, that would be different. <laughs> what the hell is this? Go away. <laughs> This is the kind of thing that will make you crazy. <laughs> it just seems like lately I can't get a whole speech by anybody on here before somehow the Wi-Fi goes down. And I'm paying a lot for it, so I'm pissed off. I'm not sharing this. I don't know who you're for. What press are you with? Pardon? What press are you with? I give up. Hotfire at livestream.com and then my own channel. Oh, good. So I'm going out on two channels right now. Give up. It is not working. So I don't care. Okay. Well, we're going to stream today, and I'm not going to. Well, you really shouldn't. But I'll make it on my bed. There's an interesting guy to interview over there. I, I, I think it's kind of like Murphy's Law. If you if you try to point your camera at something, somebody will walk in your way. <laughs> I got a really good connection now. talking about it. It keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not serving as much, but getting less art out, so oh, I probably should starve more. Enough, yeah. <laughs> it's like a water pack thingy from uh, Fire Dog Lake. Fire Dog Lake? Uh, I'm just going to... Camping place, yeah. yeah. It's like geared up for serious activism. It goes from state to state. He lives out of his car. He works a little bit to keep himself going. And he just does what he thinks is right. I mean, sometimes it's occupied, sometimes it's not. Right, just whatever causes the problem. Manufacturing. If people are getting hurt in pursuit of profit, it's dumb against 
Excellent. And then we'll wait for music so we can scare them a little bit. Um, always something. So, um, and actually get the light behind you and you're better? No, no, the light behind him. No, you're good. You're safe, though. <laughs> so, um, so, like, when did you get to New York? Um, I got to New York on Thursday, so, uh, a few years ago, yeah. What's your handle? What was that? Where do you go by name? I go by Dave Black Jr. Okay. Excellent, excellent. And why are you in New York? Why are you here today? Um, I'm here today to, to protest the Spectre Pipeline. I think what they're doing to this uh, public park is unsafe and just plain wrong. I think that uh, Big Oil has uh, greased a lot of gears to get what they want done and completely ignored the will of the people. Wait, are you implying that uh, Big Oil, like corporations, influence the politicians to make decisions? That affect our environment? Absolutely. In order for a politician to be elected, they have to have millions of dollars in media resources. So the only way for them to continue to be elected is to hold the interest of those corporations at hand. So this pipeline, for instance, which has is going to bring I, what I understand is natural gas to New York City, which doesn't need any more natural gas. For some reason, we have our sources put here, and we actually have a fairly clean Hudson River now. And you're saying this pipeline is probably brought here because it's going to earn money for their corporation as well as for the politicians that approve it. Right. And what that guy was saying over there was all they need is an easement in order to get permission. And you know, getting an easement is how they've actually ruined many portions of New York City. The entire borough of Staten Island has been screwed by easement um, abuses. All you need to do is uh, grease a few wheels and you have an easement. Right. So, yeah, big money, big politics, corporations, and the ruling the entire city. All at the same time. Not to mention directly endangering children who are bathing in this water, who are playing in this water. Not only an explosion could destroy this, but any kind of leak could be detrimental to their health, to our children's health. There was an explosion over there before. I think that was related to the construction. Right. Okay, so there was things... Yeah, it looked like, like they were blasting over there on the other side. They were blasting in Jersey. Yep. So, if this is not just a New York City issue, how long do you... Oh, no. <laughs> right across the river here, where are we? Lower, so that would be like um, Hoboken, Jersey. It's St. Jersey City. That Jersey that's City, Hoboken, Jersey yeah. City where they're doing it. Um, you know, thought it was you fireworks, know, but New York, New Jersey, <laughs> not really fireworks. Are, at least in this portion of New Jersey. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. So you're on. You just we're on a place called Occupy Earth. Okay. It's a live stream channel that broadcasts actions from all over the world. But we also have our own media team that comes out. Mm -hmm when we can, where we can. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's him, and then we have other guys, we have other like good friends all across the world. Sure, yeah. so. And what about what you guys do? Oh, thank you, thank you so call. much. Thank me, thank you for coming. Where do you, I'm, 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 we've been around, you know. Right, right. You're, you're, you find, you come up and we need you next week. Anyone? Your knowledge. Anyone with the heart to stand up should. Anyone with the courage to do so should. And now, um, you did say something interesting to me earlier when we were talking, um, which was that you predict next weekend for the anniversary that you will be arrested. Yes. Okay. And what makes you so sure? Oh, okay. You can't yeah. say no. Okay. I don't. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, then I gave him an NLG number for New York City. Uh, Good thing to have so for everybody. Of course, I have to rewrite on my arm. I can't lose this number. No, no. Actually, with any action, I'm always out with this on my arm. And I've never been arrested. I really am not planning on being arrested. I will be if it's the right cause at the right moment. I will be, but if I don't want it to be. I'm a single mother. It's just not the right thing for me at this point in my life. But if it happens, it happens. I have this number on me to give to people like you right. um, who might not know. I'm very familiar with the NLG in New York City. Um, the NLG and my family have a very special relationship <laughs> going back um, oh, almost 50, probably around 50 years. When would 1970 have been? 30, 40 something years? 40 something years. Yeah. Yeah. The Vietnam War, my brother is uh, quite a bit older than me, so he's a Vietnam War protester, and the NLG represented him when he was arrested. And they represented my niece when she was arrested. So the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Apparently, at, no, Zuccotti Park, day four, then the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, oh. She got arrested twice. Twice, I forgot. <laughs> Apparently, it appears that I'm next. <laughs> so 
we don't know when and if and what, how that will happen. But well, we hope it doesn't. We hope it doesn't, but if it does, <laughs> I know what to do and how to handle myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. And you hey, know, I lost it already. I've yelled at a few cops myself, so yeah. <laughs> it could happen. I'm so nice to them. It made it vomitiously gross. Mm -hmm. I, I could go up there right now and have a full conversation with those cops and be as sweet as can be and totally nail their ass and make my point. And then they walk away and they don't know what to do. Because I'm actually friendly. In, 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 I'm a 9-11 second responder, which is a psychologist. I treat 9-11 um, which are cops, firefighters sanitation workers, anyone that worked down there, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I have another connection with police that is extremely um, important, and where they did their, where they were heroes, you know, all that kind of stuff. Where I love them, and they're my favorite people in the world. And then I have Biff. <laughs> police officers are just doing their job. It's not, it's not right to be angry with them. It's just right to be angry with the system that employs them. It, it can be difficult, though, when you're witnessing yeah, brutality. I was witnessing brutality when I yelled at him. Brutality by the police force just rectifies our problems. Well, we showed it to him. Showed it to everybody. I, mean. I left my battery died. I don't know what the hell was coming. I'm gone 15 minutes, and he's... Anyway, thank you. I should go say hello. It's only better when I have my camera. I'll come with you. No, but you look too much like... I get away with it. Yeah. You know, sure. I got the girl thing going. Yeah, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Short, fat. I'm an old lady. I'm a psychologist. Sweet old lady mentality. Get away with murder. I do. Not murder, but um, <laughs> I, no, I got through. I got through with the barricade. Um, I mean, every tip to be mine. I don't have any occupiers. By saying, okay, I know I have a right to do that. did that before, I thought it was fireworks, but it's right where they're doing the construction. So, uh, it's right across the river. Not doing much over here right now, but... If I'm just standing there filming, I don't think I'll get arrested. Not in this. Should I, should I just carry it? And it's up I to you, point Teddy. I'm in the opposite direction and so they don't think I'm filming them. It's up to you. I'm not afraid of them. I have to ask them what the neighbors are going to think when they hear these noises. I have to ask them. And do they think it might trigger PTSD? Oh, I have to do this. It's 9-11 okay, anniversary. Okay, let's go. Okay, come on. I don't have my press pass or my license. That's anything. all right. I can vouch for you. Unless oh, that guy was like so totally cool before. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hello. I want to make sure that uh, neither them nor New York is going to be triggered for 9-11 being so close to the anniversary. Yeah, I got it. We're going to go see the police.
I gotta say, Look that's... Look at the smog from the smoke! I know. Well, it's because the wind's blowing this direction. I thought we were gonna inhale the smoke. No, we get to, we get to, to the breathe these shit. Well, I start having an asthma attack. Or anybody. You need to go to the hospital because of tracking. No wonder it's causing friggin' lung cancer. Look at All that shit. All the smoke goes in the river. Oh, there 
I wouldn't call it a lie exactly. Okay. Stay nice and cozy. And leave a little walkway here if you guys don't want to. Yeah. Okay, so who can tell me what direct action is? <laughs> okay. No one? So we actually stopped them from going forward with their plans. Yeah. When we do something, physically. Yeah. It's an action and it's direct. <laughs> I got it. I win. <laughs> Did you all hear that? No, say it again loud. Confront a problem directly, not writing a letter or a phone call. Personally, she said personally. <laughs> When you lay down in front of the pipe and don't let them do any work. There you go. Yeah. So that's so a lot of these are all these are all definitely right answers. You know, direct action is often taking your body to so not to confront a problem directly, do things outside of the prescribed channels of writing letters and uh, going to public forums to be ignored, you know, but to actually get attention and prevent something from happening from happening or make something happen. Um, and we can, we're going to go through some of the ways that we can actually take that idea and apply it to some of the methods. Can you give us an example of a direct action in history or recently that you know of? Something that was effective or exciting. Yeah, the first thing is blog page. Oh, good. Tell us about it. Woo! Yeah. Well, can you say it real loud? We on live stream. Occupy Earth. <laughs> Protecting their witch amendment rights with big guns in their hands. I don't know what you're doing. 
Oh, yeah. Julia Butterfly. Yeah, the okay. Sea Shepherds. Okay. And so all, yeah, Sea Shepherds, rammed and sank the entire Icelandic yeah. whaling fleet. Interesting. That's the whole body of technology to think about. Um, so all of these are different sort of like movement ideas. Um, WikiLeaks. Sorry. What's an occupy? What's, what's been an occupied direct action? So what sort of method can these things characterize? What sort of specific ideas people are saying? Um, you know, sitting in, handing out flyers in very unlikely circumstances, putting your body in the way of, of things. Are there any other specific tactics that you can use? Uh, Non-cooperation. Making a tripod, sitting on top. Yeah, making a tripod, sitting on the street. Yes. Boycott. Uh, interrupting in the uh, uh, Interrupting public forum. Yes. Water balloon launches at that machine. <laughs> hey, wouldn't it be cool if everybody sort of like condensed and we're all screaming at each other? Let's all, let's have a little bit of a conversation. We gotta leave. Gotta leave a path, though. Gotta right, leave a path. Yeah. Okay. All right. Keep the path. I'll keep the tempo. All right. Um, yeah, any other, any other methods that you can um, Very recent, the hot and crusty um, uh, union, yeah, the, the union project where they set up an alternate um, way of getting bagels and coffee and whatever in front of the store. Yeah, so they reopened the system. store and then they were their own store they were locked out of. Right. Yes. Yes. I saw two right things now. also. Hard block, barricade. Yes. Yes. My grandmother was a suffragette and had to fight for the right to vote as a woman. Yeah, we're, we're keeping a path right here. I'm making sure. We were trying to keep a Two path. Right here. Let's move up a little bit, you guys. I'll maintain the path. Sure. Okay. Okay. Move forward. They're doing a fundraiser here. They're moving because the police demand that we keep a pathway open. So I'm going to get on the other side. More light. You guys, I don't know if we can't declare victory just yet, but that started out as a weak, fussy, fussy, excuse me. hell with hot and crusty management. We're going down with the ship. And it turned into them going into negotiation and they're this close from a really unexpected victory coming out of this direct action movement that we're all a part of. Um, okay. So, years ago, when they built the water treatment plant up on 125th Street, they built it badly. And all sorts of odors from the fermentation days were wafting into West Harlem. And the people in West Harlem got organized. And their first action in terms of getting media attention is they went out onto the West Side Highway and blocked the highway. No business as usual. And this got them the kind of, of press coverage that allowed them to develop their organization. Eventually, they had to retrofit that water treatment plant for almost worth a billion dollars to put caps on the fermentation tanks. And they also got a state credit on top of the water treatment plant. So this is a, and this is an organization with the contact today called REACT. This is the top West Harlem environmental action. That's, that's awesome. You blocked the West Side Highway, you say, huh? Honey, where is that? And I think that it could be a strategy that could be used today that would be even more effective than a state law. Sure. So there's a lot of things. I have one. The
Esperanza, viva! All right. So there's a lot of different kinds of methods you can use, and uh, this is a really hurried direct action. So you know, we're just here. Our officials and big enviros aren't going to be around to help us until November, probably, right? So we're going to have to kick a little ass and figure out what we want to do. Within that, we also need to keep ourselves safe. So part of the work that I do is with the National Lawyers Guild as a Know Your Rights trainer. Um, and this is not a really comprehensive Know Your Rights training. We just want to go over a little bit about how to keep yourself safe with uh, with the cops and with the courts, uh, keep each other safe, and uh, make sure that you keep your record reasonably clean or clear so you can move forward as a direct action. Child person. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so does anybody, uh, does anybody, can anybody think of any significant uh, rights or laws that are here that should be observed or thought about um, if you're thinking about taking on direct action? You have the right to change That's really important. Let's go ahead and start with that. We call this the magic word, okay? In a second you guys are going to repeat after me. I am going to remain silent. I would like to remain my lawyer. Okay. I am going to remain silent. I would like to see my lawyer. Okay, so we call that the magic word because that turns your rights off. Okay? After that, it's illegal to ask you any more questions. In New York State, it's advisable to tell them your name, your birthday. You don't have to tell them anything else. Maybe you want to tell them your address. That might help get in the process. You have to call it on your ID. You have to turn that ID. Beyond that, there is no favor that the police can do for you. The, the district attorney is person who decides your charges and moves against you on behalf of the state. These cops lie. They drugs with you. They can incite you to do things. There's a there's a, a friend of a friend right now who's locked up for seven years. They built a cottage all rigged with a bunch of surveillance equipment, and all he said was, "I'd really like to not, not firebomb it." They locked for everything, gave it up for seven years, okay? So these cops are crazy, intense liars, and uh, that was part of the Green Scare. That was part of a whole bunch of sort of much more militant sabotage and things that were going on. Which are not things that we're discussing here in this in this direct action context. Um, but uh, so just remember, cops are liars, trained to lie, anything they can do is totally suspect. Don't say anything to them that can't do. I'm going to remain silent. I want to see a lawyer. Are there any other magic words that you want to There's no situation that's so bad that a cop can't make it worse. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I do not consent to a search. That's what I was looking for. That's the magic words number two. Can everybody say that with me? I do not consent to a search. You want to say that super loud and clear so that onlookers can hear what you're saying. They can be witnesses. Um, and it might help the, you know, the cops might recognize that phrase and be like, oh. Yeah, Maybe not, but it's, it's, it's looked at as a legal band-aid. Often cops do not observe the law at all. And so if they find, say, a big piece of steel pipe in your bag that you may or may not have been planning to use to lock your face or other body parts to a piece of, I don't know, pipeline building equipment, um, later, if they did not observe the letter of the law, your lawyer can say, well, this is a not consent to search. If you do not say, I do not consent to this search, you say, I would rather you didn't, or I don't know, officer, or you are you quiet, the cop can say, well, that's ar articulable or construable. You know, that's just kind of weird against you. You've got to know the magic word in order for the magic to happen. Let's go over the magic words just real quick again. First, I would like to remain silent. I want to see my lawyer. I would like to remain silent. I would like to see my lawyer. Okay. Number two, I do not consent to this search. I do not consent to this search. Hell no. All right. Um, so what else? You know, so... Uh, am I free to go? So yeah, he's talking about the levels of detainment. Okay, so there are three levels of detainment, um, and so three levels of interaction with the police, right? One is casual questioning, right? And if they're coming out because you're questioning, you're like, I would say, you know, in the, in the interest of de-escalating, you know, lightly, entangling yourself, cops are like wild animals, pulling away on your back, right? Um, the 
if they are like, no, stop, you can't go anywhere, you ask them, am I being detained? They're either say, no, you're not being detained, in which case you continue to leave, or they say, yes, you are being detained. Why am I being detained? There may or may not be a reason for this, but I do give you a reason. Remember that, because especially in New York City, it'll probably be something else that you know, The arresting officer is some guy down the street by the van, never saw what you did or didn't do and never put your hand in there. And so that can be part of the coverage later on in the course, right? So is everybody kind of getting this? This is sort of a crash course. And really, over next week, or on Thursday, on Saturday and Sunday, as part of the September 17th uh, organizing, uh, whether or not you're going to be part of those days of action, how many of you know your rights training? And what's going to be a direct action training? A better opportunity to build your familiarity. Okay, so, you know, again, caught live. This is a signed statement from everybody in your affinity group saying you're the leader and here's a whole list of the felonies that you are guilty of. This is a federal terrorism enhancement statute for our energy development enterprise. And uh, I can't believe you talked yourself into this, Hippie, but uh, if you don't tell me everything that went into planning this and who you planned this with, your mom and dad aren't going to see you. That kind of shit is what happens all the time. When you're in a lockdown, whether it's a soft lock or a hard lock situation, nine out of ten times, they lie to you and get you to voluntarily abandon your action. There's no shame in, in, in getting intimidated by armed people out of their armed direct action, right? But just remember that they're lying to you and integrate that into what you're doing. You know, part of the intimidation, the deceit that they use. Um, what else as far as know your rights? What other rights do people need to know? Remaining silent, again. That's important. You can't emphasize that enough. Um, I also think that, like, I don't know. I've got, like, all kinds of different privilege. You don't have to go too deep into it. Um, I don't think that you necessarily... It's not, it doesn't just... Uh, I have a good time in jail. Right? Maybe it's easier for me to get to have a good time in jail than for some people. But I think that there's a little bit of like when you get locked up, you can kind of recognize that you're kind of always locked up. That the wardens and the state and all this crap constrain your movement to varying degrees all the time. And even when you are locked up, they really can't control you and they don't actually have much power over you. And it can be very liberating. So as we move through the cops and courts situation, you can kind of realize that like it's all these sort of impositions of thought and perspective that they're putting on you more than sort of the terror that we think about coming from Hollywood around cops and prison. Um, okay, so we're going to move on into the next section, unless anybody has any, let's, it's totally in inadequate Know Your Rights training. There's really, you know, me and other folks in the guild provide a Know Your Rights training, so... Bunch, and if people are contemplating actions, folks from the guild lawyers and legal workers can come and work with y'all and, and talk. But let's go on into soft law case. Yes, yeah, so now that you know uh, some of your rights about that, we're going to talk about some ways you can get in trouble, right? Yeah. So, um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is, is soft law, right? There's going to go into hard law. There's a lot of ways that we can create barricades to things like giant pipelines, right, and to this fracking industry that we want to stop. And the way that we're doing this with direct action is that we're using our own bodies to get in the way and to lay down the law the way that we can, right? So, just like the exercises that you did, 
bridges and Lopi and Marina. Like, these are ways that we can take space, right? You can go into the driveway there and you can do the flocking exercise with like a hundred people. Maybe that would stop the for a while. You can do the walking back and forth. Maybe you're like dressed like joggers, you know, with all the rest of the people and the people speed biking. And then suddenly you keep turning around. And you keep turning around like, oh no, I'm just a West Village citizen on my jogging path. But you don't leave me alone, you know? But maybe you just keep jogging in that one little tiny loop. Who knows? There's a lot of ways to take up space that are that are creative, that can be safe, that can be, you know, a little bit more out of balance or not. So 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 we're gonna try some of those things of ways that we can take space, right? So this is this is a little set of vocabulary and code words that we can use. It's going to be used in a lot of the S17 training coming up this week that Henry was talking about. So, ways to fill space. So if I call this word huff, and everyone jumps toward me and starts to jump up and down and say huff, 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 Okay, so, great. So, this 
this is right now. We're going to decide on directions together. That is east, that is west, that is north, and that is south, right? So if we called Wall West, everyone would say it's that way, right? So turn around, think fast, do it together. Wall West. Try, yeah, try the backwards one behind your back. Now remember, I see a lot of going on
then try to do it all together at the same time. Like you're surrounded by cops, you're in the freedom cage, you're like being followed by tons and tons of scooters, and y'all all decide you're gonna go civilian, and you just break out, and then you're gonna come back together in front of Bank of America, and, you know, with your uh, whatever's gonna happen. Um, you guys just a little bit about that. Kinds of, any kind of screwball application you want for it. You know, a lot of this stuff, most of the stuff we're talking to you guys about has been developed in the last 15 years, most of it before 10 years ago. And so there's tons of room for innovation. Think of crazy ideas, dry run it, and use it to screw over the corporation. Yeah. If that's a structure that works for you, absolutely. I mean, the higher level of affinity and and your ability to work together is a better. I mean, this is one of the greatest things about these skirmish maneuvers. Hey, just quickly, you guys, Wall North! warfare of like, you can't hurt me, I'm a nonviolent protester, and I'm so courageous, and I'm so ethical, and you know, you, what have you got, you're just a silly guy, right? So, uh, but there are, there's also equipment, we have technology, right? There's a bunch of stuff that we can use to strengthen our blockades, last longer in our blockades, and really, if we give the media time to show up, make them like, put a little bit of effort into it. Does anybody know any examples of hard blockades or technical? Bike locks, yeah, nice. What do you do with a bike lock? Put it around your neck. Chain yourself. Now you lock it up, something else. Putting the pipe here, locking your hands inside pipes. Yeah, locking each other inside pipes, right? That's called black bear of steel or a lock box. Can you see? Sleeping dragons. Now we're getting super technical. Okay, the sleeping dragon is a, a pit dug in the ground with a lock box with a steel pipe with a pin in the bottom, cemented into the pit. 
and you lay down in the road and carabiner a piece of chain that's around your wrist down into the hole. And so they get a jackhammer up the whole road and then cut through the steel pipe to get you out. All right? It's not really comfortable, but it's super badass. Nothing we're likely to see in New York Anything else for technical stuff? One thing I like a lot is called a blue box, and that's something that we can learn how to make together. Uh, it's a piece of PVC pipe um, with some chicken wire wrapped around it, and then you kind of pour roofing tar into the chicken wire while you wrap it in saran wrap. You wrap the whole thing in a bunch of yarn and then in a bunch of duct tape, okay? And so this, so, there, so you're, you're locked into this tube with your friend and maybe the 12 other friends in a big circle block in an intersection, and they come with their, like, cutters, you know? And they start trying to cut it. They got you out, and it's just like ruining tool after tool. And uh, it's a cheap way, to, and a low skill way, to kind of really make them put, you know, put in their deals. Right. Um, so, yeah, any other sort of technical blockades? Tripods are awesome. They're visually really stunning, especially if there's a blockade in front of them that blocks the cherry picker from getting to it so they can just go grab the person out of it. A tripod is maybe a 25 or 30 foot high uh, tripod, right? With a person either on top of the crisscross arms and legs or suspended just below it, right? And, you know, with a banner, it is a beautiful, way outside the box, visual and technical blockade. Right? Really nice. um, okay, so, that, so you guys got the idea. I think that, you know, lock boxes and maybe like barrels full of cement with a pipe in it they can drop off. Maybe that's about as technical as we're likely to get. Bike locks. Super easy. Everybody's got a bike lock. I'm going to bike lock myself. You, you're going to bike lock yourself. And, uh, you know, we can bike lock ourselves. To, uh, you know, any of that shit. Okay, so um, we're just going to go over how are people generally evicted from these different interruptions. You know, bring this steel contraption you've made and you're refusing to leave. How are the cops going to get you out? What? Draws of life. Intimidation. Intimidation. Nine times out of ten. Your friend signed the, the statement against you. You've got all these felony offenses. I'm going to kick your ass. They just start breaking out the pepper spray and the, like, tortured knuckly little torture things and, like, showing and scaring you. Yeah. I love it that you're in Australia. We've all we've been trying to dare each other to use this Australian tactic for a long time. A few people in Australia have been super gluing their hands to the window. And the raw things are just way out. Anyway, super awesome. Um, and blockading coal trains. It's awesome. Yeah, what about you? Okay, so right. So another way they might do it. Now not in New York so much. But oh, what's what's our chemical weapon that we have to use? Pepper spray, right? So they've got these big old fire hydrant sized hose down. I've been pepper sprayed a few times. If you need a lot of hot peppers, it's not as bad. I don't think so, but hey, don't, don't, I'm not a doctor, you know? Um, I'm a tear gas. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, right. So, the, so they use intimidation. Now, listen, I'm going to say this again, right? This is all a battle of mine, right? They've got this whole, we are this indestructible state apparatus. Look at all our phalanxes of armed cops and all our strategies and our courts and our blah, blah, blah. You'll never defeat us. And like, oh God, we're scared, right? We are the people, right? We are pure ethics. We are the, we're everything that they know about what was noble about their grandparents' generation. You know, we are we are standing here not because we're being paid to, but because we believe in, in this case, public health, you know? And we are not leaving, and they will never, never bring us down. So we have to get them to believe that and, uh, and, and realize that everything that they're doing is just a mind game. Right? You can resist any and everything that they do. There's no shame in getting the hell out and, you know, not going to jail or trying to reduce your charges or, you know, making sure that you're safe either legally or physically. And there's always an option. You can take it as far as you want to go. You know, 
just remember that no matter what sort of chaos is going on around you in that moment, you can remember why you're there, remember the impacts of the things that you're blocking on the world around you, and stay as strong as you really feel comfortable. Don't believe the hype. Yeah. If there are people with cameras around when this goes down, it's helpful for the police to be aware that the whole world is watching, and that's something that you can do. Yeah, we're, you know, we're going to have to, there's a bunch of roles that we're going to go through real quick. Um, and I think that the videographer stuff is part of it, but in a second, if you guys are comfortable, we're going to go and uh, we're going to divvy up into a couple different imaginary roles, and we're going to go do an imaginary stop blockade right in front of the oh. just to kind of get into it. Are you, is everybody down with that? We're not going to like try and get anybody arrested or anything. We're just going to laugh. But, uh, yeah. What could, I mean, I have this question in 1995. What could, what could be for the sort of goggles? Uh, in case they get sprayed by um, You can wear goggles. You can wear uh, vinegar soaked uh, handkerchiefs, stuff like that. Here in a uh, one time I was in a gas mask in Canada and they just pulled the gas mask off and sprayed me. <laughs> I, I was so bad. I was like, are you What? <laughs> <laughs> um, but being, my roots are in Texas and chili peppers. I was better off than those Canadians, I swear to God. So we have a week to start eating chili peppers. Eat the chili peppers! Now, go home yeah. and get Mexican food. <laughs> okay, so our people down, we're going to distribute rolls, we're going to have a wicked, hectic action. Action, right? And then we're going to have a wicked, quick conversation about how that went and how it would be better in its real application. Right? Um, so, is that cool with everybody? Let's do that. Wait, before All we right. before do we it. break? Yeah. Everybody, so we're doing these trainings, and we need to be able to alert you to when to show up, actually. No, no, let's like, just say, like, we're going to have a whole no, no, bunch no, no, of announcements. No. This is going to happen right now. Because then I have to tell what the guy just told me. Just tell you. Okay, so everybody on a cell phone? Yes. Take out your cell phones. Text message. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna just walk you through this so that everybody knows how to do it. Uh, compose a new message to this phone number two three five five nine. Got it. Wait, wait, wait. It's not a no, it's not a normal amount of numbers, but two three five five nine. Two three. Five five nine. Five five nine. Okay, so in the body of the text. At, just do the at symbol, at frat. F R A C K E D. You guys, if you don't, this is a text loop. If you want to subscribe to Action Alerts, you can send at frat to 2355. So, right now, uh, if you want to be in the celly loop, frat is your K? F R A C K E D. At frat, and then hit send. And you'll be automatically subscribed. Okay? So we're gonna before we do this, this little practice rehearsal for an action that is going to happen probably any day now, uh, we wanna we wanna break people into some roles for that. So yeah, so a lot of people here are actually playing roles in direct action, support roles, like media, like painting banners, like being direct support. Who knows what direct support is? Tell me what it is. Direct support are those people who aren't involved directly in the action. Food and water, right? Yeah. So liaisons, what kind of media liaison? Police liaison. Lopi's the police liaison with these guys right now. What'd you say? JK or anybody want to say something? Yeah. Worker liaison in this kind of shit. Yeah, someone to flyer and talk to all the people who want to know what the hell's going on. Why are blocking their bike path or their community park? Yeah. Someone say support person. Yeah, direct support. Yeah. Jail support. Right. There's some jail support trainings that are coming up 
y'all y'all are interested in just being involved, sort of direct action, like upping your skill level over this next week. This town's blowing up with awesome trainings for jail support, human rights, direct action, legal video, all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, so do people have a sense of any role that they would like to play in this in this action? Who wants to lock down to pretend to lock down in this role play? Jessica wants to. I can tell you that. Michelle wants to. All right, Eric. Sweet. All right, so we've got seven. Okay, well, those seven people come stand up here in the front. Okay, now can we have a couple people to be their direct support? Thank you. All right, direct support. So you guys have food and water and hugs and kisses. Okay, and then. And then we already have documentation. What about immediate liaison? This is